back up Professor Math videos. I've got a few more of these parentheses within brackets, within braces problems I want to do for this video, and that'll wrap up this section, and then I will start doing more practice with order of operations just to get us familiar with this stuff. I've pre-written these problems. Let's see if I can do these right. We have at the top 2x plus 9 minus 8y plus 16. Notice we're subtracting the group. That's a negative 1. We're going to distribute this in each term here. Right? So we copy this part, 2x plus 9. The parentheses are just simply to show you the group, but once you recognize that that's the group, then you can leave the parentheses off. This becomes minus 8y minus 16. Now, 2x and negative 8y are not like terms, right? So you can't combine them, you can't group them. But 9 and negative 16 are. So we want to put them together. So we rewrite this as 2x plus 9 minus 16 minus 8y. And this becomes... I wrote 28, I meant 2x. This becomes 2x plus negative 7 minus 8y, which is basically 2x minus 7 minus 7 minus 8y. These are, none of these are like terms, so that's your final answer. That's how you have that final answer. Boy, let's hope I've left enough room for myself. Now we have 8 minus 9 minus 12 plus 5. You can see that the 12 plus 5 is nestled in parentheses within brackets, within braces. Each grouping symbol expands with another number. We always begin with the innermost grouping symbol, innermost, and move outward to solve, right? So, we want to copy this. There's our 8 minus 9 minus, and what's 12 plus 5? 17. And you can see we've eliminated the parenthesis here, huh? Now we do the next step. We do the next innermost grouping symbol, which is the braces, the brackets, within the braces. We'll do this one next. So this becomes 8, I want to keep my brace, minus, what's 9 minus 17? Is 8, right? We have an 8 minus a minus 8. I want you to see this. I'm going to erase that so I have more room. 8 minus a minus 8, so we can negate the negative, and this simply becomes 16 for that second term. See how that does? One step at a time, beginning with the innermost grouping symbol, and move outward. Same thing with here. It's the same exact kind of problem as this, just different numbers. See, you can invent your own, you can create your own equations to practice. 3 plus 4 minus 6 minus 7. We want to rewrite this, copy in it. 3 plus 4 minus, and now what 6 minus 7 is minus 1. So we are subtracting a negative, and we've gotten rid of the parentheses. I've just put the parentheses around the negative so that we don't confuse the subtraction with the negative. Now this becomes 3 plus 4 minus minus 1 and we negate the negative. So this essentially becomes 3 plus 4 plus 1 is 5 which equals 8. 
Okay, let's do this next one. This next one is showing you, see the reason we're practicing group symbols is so that we can get used to working from the inside and working out. We start with the innermost and work out. But the world is complicated. There's many, many factors that can go on all at once, you know. So sometimes you'll have equations that put entire groups within groups within groups as a group, and then they will subtract another unit of groups within groups within groups. <laughs> so it's not like it's hard. We just have more steps. That's all there is to it. We just have to do it more steps. So let's do that. Hopefully I've got enough space. This is a great big long one. The first thing we want to do is copy this part down right. 9 minus, we got the bracket, 3 plus, now we've arrived at the innermost parenthesis, so we solve what's in here. What is 4 minus 7? It's negative 3, isn't it? There's your parenthesis. I put the parenthesis because it's a negative. It keeps your sign separate and doesn't mesh it up with this other sign. So I kept the parenthesis for that reason. Now we subtract this one. 6 plus 11 minus. Now we arrive at the innermost parenthesis. So what is 3 and 2? Simply 5 and I've eliminated the parenthesis in this part. So now we go back over here. We, we want to work from left to right. We go back over here and do the next step, solving the next innermost bracket. So we're going to copy 9 again, subtract what is 3 plus negative 3. What's 3 minus 3? Zero, isn't it? That eliminates the bracket. Subtract six plus what's eleven minus five? Six. Right? So we have nine minus zero is nine. Subtract six plus six is 12, and that gives you a negative 3. You see, step by step, you eliminate the innermost, then you eliminate the next innermost, then you eliminate the outermost, and get your answer. Now see, there wasn't any super duper hard, difficult, spectacular, wild, weird multiplication, addition, subtraction, or division in that. It's just you have to do it step by step step. That's the key to doing these things successfully. Alright, now here we have an equation of equations so far. I've tried to combine a little bit of everything that we've learned in algebra at this point into one equation so that you can see how learning the different operations, understanding the different rules, help us solve what look like really ratty, nasty, tough, bad equations, and they aren't. It's an illusion. Once we have the math knowledge, this stuff becomes easy. Now let's look at this equation. This would blow an algebra student out of the water if you didn't understand what, what you know now because of the previous videos. 2 cubed minus 3 squared minus the quantity 8 minus 1 half plus 3 squared plus 6 squared minus 13 plus the absolute value of negative 2. Now, did I not tell you with this earlier in one of my very first videos that you're not going to be able to solve these equations in your head? Here's one of them. But we can solve them. <laughs> the good news is just one step at a time. We begin whenever you see parenthesis within brackets, 
with embraces we know begin in the innermost parenthesis. But we need to copy the information correctly. So let's copy this. Two thirds minus three squared minus, now we've got the first part of the brace, the first part of the bracket. Now we've arrived at the innermost, we can solve this. This is simply seven and a half. Okay? We've got that. We eliminated the parenthesis. Plus, now we go to the second huge expression. And I've left the squares on purpose because I want to focus on the innermost stuff first. So I'm going to do that here too. Three squared plus six squared minus. Now we've arrived at the innermost parenthesis, which is 13 plus the absolute value of negative 2. We know absolute value is easy. It's always going to be a positive answer. It's simply the distance from the number to 0. How far away from 0 is negative 2? It's just 2, right? It's just 2. <laughs> so 13 plus 2 is simply 15, right? We have the bracket. We solved the parenthesis, but we still have the bracket and we still have the brace. It's important to continue copying correctly all of the grouping factors, okay? So with this next step, let's solve all the exponents. We go back over here. 2 cubed is 8. Subtract, keep the bracket, 3 squared is 9, subtract 7 and a half, keep the brace, keep the bracket, or keep the bracket, keep the brace, plus 3 squared is 9, plus 6 squared is 36, subtract 15. Okay, so you can see we're making headway. We're making progress now. So let's check this out. Let's go again one step further and do the innermost brackets within the braces. Here's the brackets, and they're within these braces. So the brackets are what we concentrate on next. 8, subtract. What's 9 minus 7 and a half? 1 and a half, isn't it? And there we got rid of the bracket plus 9 plus, what's 36 minus 15? 21. And now we've gotten rid of both brackets in the equations. All we have left are the braces. So let's do those. 8 minus 1 and a half. 6 and a half. Plus 9 plus 21 is 30. And we've gotten rid of the braces finally. So what's 30 plus 6 and a half? 36 and 1 half. So you see by step by step process, starting in the innermost braces and just simply working out in the groups, solving the exponents, doing the addition, the subtraction, keeping your signs clear it is always easiest if you have a 3 minus a minus 1. Uh, that can goof you up. Writing it this way is dangerous. Uh, you don't know if that's just a long single minus. You, you don't know what that is. Don't do it this way. Keep yourself clear. 3 minus a negative 1. Use your parenthesis. Use the grouping symbols. They are your friends. This is much more clear than this. See, if you have something like this, that's ugly. That's just ugly. It's confusing. Don't do this to yourself. 
Make it simple. Watch what happens when you put a parenthesis around the numbers. 4 minus a negative 6 minus 4 minus a negative 2. That's much easier to do than the other way. Use your parenthesis. That's all the reason these great big long cotton picking equations have the parenthesis and the brackets and the braces because they're trying to keep things clear. It shows you which groups of numbers belong with each other, which ones to solve first, and then which ones to solve second, and then which ones to solve third, and then it works through. So, th so that's basically what I wanted to tell you about that. And we're going to do a lot more practice on these, I promise. So anyway, that's pretty much it for now. Um, happy calculating, man. Thanks for watching my videos. I'm enjoying reviewing this stuff for you. Remember, th this is for your sake, but it's also for my sake. This is outstanding practice. We will do more practice videos also now that we've learned a little bit more on how to do things. So happy calculating, man. Have a great life, and I will see you in the next videos.